Oh, that's what my daddy meant when he said it's gonna hurt me more it's gonna hurt you. <laughs> See, I'm old school, y'all. I believe in disciplining my kids. I believe in spare the rod, spoil the child. So sometimes in my house, it gets physical. My sons are bigger than me. So sometimes it gets real physical. <laughs> Last week it got physical and I think I pulled something. <laughs> I was sore for three days. I said, oh, that's what my daddy meant when he said it's gonna hurt me more it's gonna hurt you. <laughs> and I come from a strong Christian background. At my house, we have the Bible on DVD. A DVD of the Bible. So when my kids do something wrong, I make them sit down and watch when Abraham was gonna sacrifice Isaac. <laughs> and I pause it right before the lamb come and I make them go to bed. Life moves so fast, y'all. I remember when they were little, now they're getting bigger. My son, my youngest son, is the most polite, disrespectful child in the world. <laughs> polite, disrespectful. He's, he don't curse, he's not rude. He disrespects you with proven facts. Been doing it his whole life. Remember he was little, took him to a friend's house. He was like, Dad, I'm kinda hungry. I said, all right, we'll leave, we'll get something to eat. And my friend overheard him. He said, hey, little buddy, you want something to eat? I got something to eat, you want some? He said, no, thank you, sir, you have roaches. And roaches carry germs. I'll just wait till I go home. <laughs> you do have roaches, man. He at that age now where he wants to do what his friends do. Hey, Dad, can I get the new iPhone? I said, you got some new iPhone money? No, that's why I'm asking you. <laughs> well, I guess you're gonna use that old Android. All right, Dad, well, can I hang out with my friends? Yeah, hang out with your friends, but call me at 8.30. Okay, Dad, 8.30 comes, no call. 9.30 comes, no call. He walk in the house at 10 o'clock, <clears throat> upside his head immediately to establish dominance in my home, right? <laughs> Hey man, didn't I tell you to call me at 8.30? Dad, I didn't call you because my phone died. <laughs> when you with your friends, don't they got phones? Don't they got chargers? Well yeah, Dad, they got the new iPhone. I got this old Android, the charger won't even fit. <laughs> well if they had their phone and they had their chargers, why didn't you call me from their phone? Well, Dad, I didn't call you from their phone because I don't know your number. I know Mama's number, but yours is just a speed dial. <laughs> just go to bed. He got me again because I don't know his number either. Y'all don't nobody know numbers no more. <laughs> Polite, disrespectful. I remember he was the only uh, black kid in his class. The only one. I was proud at the open house because the kids did self-portraits. And I immediately knew which one my son was. <laughs> now the beautiful thing about these pictures was each kid got to put one thing they love at the bottom of the picture. Little Shelby had, I love Barbie. Little Josh had, I love soccer. My son, Little Ray Ray, bottom of his picture, I love chicken. <laughs> He didn't know, he didn't know. <laughs> but he did get a gold star, yes he did. <laughs> well, this is definitely gonna be an away game. I'm a joke, so I just throw them out there. It's up for you to catch them. I'm not going to work extra hard, right? <laughs> oh, my gosh. This is crazy, y'all. Uh. I was having a bad day, y'all. You ever have a day so bad that you call one of your friends that you know was doing worse than you? <laughs> so you feel better about your situation? I called my friend. I was like, hey, man, you get that job? He said, nah, I said, good. 
good. You should get a tattoo on your face. She'll stand out in the interviews. I'm glad y'all laughing, y'all, because right now as a country, we in a bad place because we so divided. Everybody divided, all because of that election. I learned something. Donald Trump is 70 years old, and Hillary Clinton is 70 years old. I called my grandma. I said, Grandma, it's jobs out there if you serious. You just can't sit in the rocket chair looking cute. Grandma, get out there and do something for yourself. You ain't raised us like that. Too much information on the news, y'all. Kids watch the news. They know what's going on in the world. I saw some kids outside playing Ebola. <laughs> yes. You got Ebola. Uh-uh, uh-uh. I was on hazmat. I was on hazmat. <laughs> but you didn't have no insurance. You didn't have no insurance. I called Obamacare. I called Obamacare. <laughs> I recently moved, uh, kind of depressing. Not that I moved to a bad place, but everything I own fit inside a truck that cost $19.99. <laughs> and they offered me the insurance for $9.99, and it just wasn't worth it. <laughs> and my new neighbor is a thug but he homeschooled his kids. So every morning they outside playing. I don't know if they skipping school or they on recess. <laughs> and I'm just too scared to ask. <laughs> this year is flying by, y'all. Uh, I said I'm gonna complete things that I started last year. I started an after school program for kids where they can come and do their homework. Yes, I so yeah, thank you. Yeah. I serve Chinese food. I call it home walk. <laughs> That's how my jokes are, I just throw them out there. So for you to catch them. I am, uh, be honest with y'all, I started this whole comedy thing because the NBA wasn't interested at, at this time. <laughs> I'm five, five and a half. <laughs> That's not the funny part. <laughs> See, women say things to me that they don't say to other men. They say stuff like, "Oh, you so cute. I'm a grown man. Why would you say that to me? Because everything is cute when it's little. She gonna tell me if you was taller, you would be so, so handsome. I said, if your hair was longer, you was in better shape, you would be Beyonce. <laughs> and it never fails after a show, somebody always walk up to me, they pat me on the back, good job, big man. Now I'm excited and confused at the same time. <laughs> Maybe I am kind of big for a little man. Kind of like a jumbo shrimp. <laughs> or a megabyte. That's like me giving false hope to a blind man. Hey, Ryan, think I'll be able to see again? Yeah, we'll just play it by ear. <laughs> and that made me think, who cleans up after seeing eye dogs? I'm at that point in my life where my family making me do stuff. They force me to get a cat. I hate cats. Cats are jerks. Don't care what you say. I can't stand them. And it's a rescue cat, so we off the streets, so I don't trust him. No, he still got his claws. It's like I live with a felon with a firearm. And cats are so condescending. They look at you like they don't trust you in your own house. That's how the cat be looking at you. And 
And whenever I leave, he get on my side of the bed and he look at me. <laughs> hey, you know when you leave, I'ma be cuddling with your wife. <laughs> I got a dog and a cat. If you have a dog and you sit a glass down, man's best friend might take a sip out your water. You'd be upset. You'd be like, you know what? My best friend just took a sip out my water. What you gonna do? Let me tell you how much of a jerk this cat is. This is what the cat did to my water. I think he just came out the litter box because my water tasted crunchy. <laughs> yeah, I was very upset too, y'all. And when you're mad, you make other people mad. You don't try to, it just happens. I went to my doctor's office. I asked him who his doctor was. And then I switched doctors. <laughs> I went to the mall, I saw a family. The whole family was ugly. I said, dang. Even the best looking person in their family is still ugly. That's like being a valedictorian in a GED program. And every time I go to the mall, I always get an application. No matter what store I go in, I get an application. People think I'm crazy. And when I leave the mall and people in the parking lot begging for spare change, I just go. <laughs> you can use me as a reference. Let me, uh, Formally introduce myself. My name is Ron, but my first name is spelled different. It's spelled R-A-H-N. Yes, my mother was tripping. <laughs> first day of school, my name was always like a question. <laughs> Ran. <laughs> Ran. <laughs> Ran. <laughs> right. Dang these black kids. <laughs> they go my favorite Raha. <laughs> now listen, if you're running for class president, we gonna need to see your birth certificate. I got a website, y'all. Make sure you check me out, ryanhortman.com. My link to Twitter's on there, my link to Facebook, because everybody's on Facebook. My mama's on Facebook. My grandmama's on Facebook. My bill collectors are on Facebook. They keep poking me. I keep ignoring them. They actually scan my bills and tag me in the pictures. My mama gonna comment, yeah, he owe me too. And then she liked it. <laughs> How you gonna like your own comment? That is so selfish. <laughs> and do me a favor, y'all. Email, call, text all your black friends. I don't think it's appropriate they participate in Farmville. <laughs> Nothing fun about farming, y'all got us the first time. <laughs> And if you send me a Farmville request, I will treat it as a hate crime and prosecute <laughs> to the fullest extent of the law. <laughs> okay, older people, Facebook is this thing on your computer. Uh, your computer kind of like your typewriter, but with a TV screen on it. 
See, I always talk about older people. Not because I don't like you, I just don't trust you. <laughs> old people are slick. You say hi, then they say hi. You end up talking to them for like two hours. <laughs> about how a loaf of bread used to cost a nickel. <laughs> now, old people can say anything to you, and you have to respect it. You have to respect your elders. This old man gonna tell me, uh, excuse me, young man. I said, yes, sir. He said, I love what you did to your hair. <laughs> I said, well, well, thank you, sir. He said, yes, it's very nice. Now, do you wash it once a day as a face or twice a week as hair? <laughs> once a day as a face, sir. I was in the grocery store. This old man said something to me. I knew how to respond, y'all. I had no comeback. I'm pushing my cart. I said, excuse me, sir. He said, oh no, you have just as much right to be here as me. <laughs> Why, thank you, Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> Feels great to shop at a newly desegregated Walmart. You got the brown bread by the white bread. I feel totally safe now. Thank you so, so much, sir. Thank you. I am a uh, happily uh, married man. Uh, thank you, yes. My wife is my better half. Ryan, you better do this and you better do that. And she's my best friend. Cause that's what she told me. <laughs> I married my high school sweetheart, y'all. And yeah, thank you. Love is real. And the wedding was so special cause our oldest son was in it. Uh, <laughs> put a ring on it, y'all. We had four kids, three sons and a daughter. We kept trying for that little girl. So she kind of like the princess of the house. When I say princess, I mean, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> Outspoken and observant. She gonna tell me, daddy. I said, what, baby? Your back and your stomach ain't the same no more. <laughs> I said, what? She said, well, your back go like this. And your stomach go like that. I said, shut up, your mama like it. She said, no, she don't. No, she don't. Now, we talked about it. She said, you need to do some sit-ups. I can't do nothing with her. I can't take her nowhere, because she too nosy. Took her to Walmart. We saw a man dressed like a lady. Immediately, she had to investigate. Excuse me, Mr. Ma'am. I know I ain't supposed to talk to strangers, but them shoes is cute. Now, it's very sensitive, y'all. I remember when I found out my daughter had to wear hearing aids. Very shocked, very upset. I actually cried about it. I thought about all the time I wasted yelling. Could have had one of my sons bring me the remote. <laughs> and I thought she would be ashamed of the hearing aids, but she loves the hearing aids. She loves them. Oh my God, Daddy, I love these hearing aids. I get the birds chirping. I get water flowing. I get all my music, Daddy. I just love them. I'm like, wow, that's amazing. But you know what? She's still a kid. Sometimes she's just hard-headed. So if I tell her to do something and she don't do it, I get very upset. Um, hey, didn't I ask you to clean up your room? Didn't I tell you to put up those dishes? You know what? You know what? Give me the hearing aids. <laughs> if you ain't gonna listen to me, you ain't gonna listen to nobody. <laughs> Stop crying, look at me when I'm talking to you. <laughs> These are just jokes, don't nobody call the people on me, right? <laughs> These are just jokes. I promise, you can ask her. 
but you're gonna have to scream real loud. <laughs> I am a uh, very special child. Uh, my parent, not that kind of special, man. <laughs> My parents were married as teenagers. I was born to teenage parents. Sometimes I think my mother's still mad at me because I got her grounded. <laughs> my mother and father <laughs> were uh, very, very young, so it didn't work out. Uh, so I can't tell you a lot about him. I know he was an athlete, so he was a fierce competitor. Uh, out of all his friends, he was the best at hide and go seek. My mother actually got remarried when I was very young, so I was blessed to have a father in my life. I had two fathers. I have a biological father, and I have a stepfather. My biological father I'll call Pops, because he wasn't around, he kind of popped up every now and then. <laughs> my stepfather I'll call Dad, because he's the one who actually raised me. Ironically, both of their names is Robert. <laughs> Told y'all my mama be tripping. <laughs> Now, she taught me to give them both the same amount of respect, so on holidays, I would get them both the same team jersey with Robert on the back. But one was home and one was away. It was a Padres jersey. Y'all big sports fans here, big sports fans? Yeah. See, I just got nervous. I get nervous around sports fans. They get too real. I saw some Yankees fans physically fight some Red Sox fans. It is never that serious, y'all. You see Ron Horton with a team jersey on, don't mean I follow the team. It means it matches my shoes, right? <laughs> The sports fans go all out, they paint their face, they dress up like the mascot. Yeah, that's kind of cool, until you lose. <laughs> then you gotta ride home looking stupid. <laughs> and then the other team always give you an insult wrapped in a compliment. Good game, poor coaching. You almost had us. You gave a good effort, and they smack you on the booty. <laughs> So whenever I see one of those big monster trucks with the gun rack and Confederate flag, I say, good game. <laughs> Poor coaching. You almost had us. You gave a good effort. And I smack him on the booty. <laughs> Don't nothing irritate him like a little black dude smacking him on the booty. And, you got a truck like that, these are just jokes. I will not be smacking you on your booty, all right? <laughs> uh, life moves so fast, y'all. I remember when uh, I was young and I made the football team. Yes, I made the football team. <laughs> uh, so proud, y'all. Kept my uniform on, helmet on, mouthpiece in. Nobody knew what I was saying but I was proud. I came home one day, my dad standing outside. We had that father to son moment. He's like, hey man, you're getting older. What are you planning on doing for the rest of your life? I said, dad, I'm pretty good at this football thing. I think I'm gonna go pro. <laughs> he looked at me right in the eyes and said, you need to pick something else. <laughs> I didn't get to, what's your backup plan, son? Or what if you get hurt, dude, I got, you need to pick something else. <laughs> So as a teenager, this made me so mad, y'all. I don't know why he didn't believe in me, right? I went to that school, I practiced harder than everybody else on that team. See, I was what you call a flanker. A lot of people don't know what a flanker is. A flanker is kind of like a running back slash receiver. And at my school, that meant that everybody made the team. So, whatever. So, I, I was so much better than the other third stringer that I, got my own play. I would come out the backfield, turn left, fake right, the ball be right there. The coach said, Ron, you ready to run your play? I said, coach, 
I stay ready. He said, all right, let's do it. I lined up in the backfield, had my game face on. They hiked the ball, I'm all fast, like a cheetah. All right, a black panther. I fake left, turn right, as soon as the ball hit my hand. I opened my eyes, and everybody was standing over me saying, wait to hold on to the ball, Ron, wait to hold on to the ball. And it freaked me out because I, I, I really didn't hold on to the ball. He hit me so hard that my body just locked up, right? <laughs> and I don't know how long I was out, but my house was 23 minutes away from the school. And my daddy was standing on me saying, I told you to pick something else. <laughs> I picked something else, y'all. <laughs> Doing comedy, we get to travel all over the place, y'all. I went to, uh, Connecticut, they put me in this fancy hotel called America's Best Value. You ever heard of this hotel? It should be called Baghdad's Mediocre at Best. It looked like a crime scene from First 48. And they had roaches. No, no, big roaches. It was a roach so big, it looked like a Snickers on the ground. And it had them big long antennas moving like the Matrix. I got ready to step on it, right? The antenna touched my leg. Yeah, yeah, I ran, I screamed, I wasn't ready, right? So I said, yo, I need to show the management that they have a problem. So what I did was I took a glass and I put it on top of the roach. Immediately, the roach got the snitching on the other roaches. Please don't kill me, I got a family. They always snitching on First 48. Y'all ain't got cable? <laughs> True story, y'all. For 10 years of my life, I did pest control. And I'm scared of bugs. But that was my motivation. I'm gonna tell you why I'm scared of bugs, y'all. I will never forget it. I was in a Kmart walking down the dog food aisle. It was a moth, it was flying. I tried to swat it out the way. The moth flew in my ear, y'all. Oh my goodness, have you ever had something fly in your ear? It is so loud. It sounds like a helicopter in my ear. And you can feel it like crawling on the inside and I didn't know what to do so I just ah! Somebody called 911. Ah! They called the paramedics, they called them. They rushed in with the gurney. As Soon as I sat down, the moth flew out my ear. I said, thank goodness it's gone. And this old man was walking by, he said, yeah, but what if it laid eggs in your ear? <laughs> That's why I don't trust old people, I'm telling you. <laughs> comedy, 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 y'all. We get to go all over the place. I went to uh, Birmingham, Alabama. I got off the plane. And this lady asked me what I was doing in town. I said, ma'am, I'm an entertainer. She said. Are you Darius Rucker? I didn't know who it was. I had to Google it. That's Hootie from Hootie and the Blowfish. So I looked at it. I was like, well, he black. And I'm black, and she white, so I guess I do look a little <laughs> like hooty. But if somebody say you look like somebody, you gotta find out if they're ugly or not. I said, excuse me, ma'am, is hooty ugly to you? She said, no, he is very handsome. I said, rock me, mama, like a wagon wheel. Rock me, mama, anyway. Yeah. I had to Google that, too, because that was... Uh, I ain't gonna lie, y'all. When I first walked out here, I was like, man, this is a lot of white people. But I, it's cool. I love white people. I have a white uncle. He the black sheep in his family. Cell phones are a trip, y'all. 
On everybody's cell phone, you got a picture of somebody you love as your screensaver. I got a picture of my wife. This lady I know, she saw the picture. She said, is that your wife? I said, yes, it is. She said, I'm sorry. I owe you an apology. Like an apology? She's like, no, no, no. I thought you had a white wife. <laughs> Why would you apologize if I had a white wife? So now I'm upset. And what am I doing that makes you think I had a white wife, right? So now I'm heated. I'm about to go off, y'all. Like upset, up to here with it, right? And then I thought about it. I was like, oh, she knows I'm in entertainment. She thinks I'm successful. <laughs> that was too much for you. I apologize. <laughs> Me and my wife been together for 20 years, y'all. Thank you. 20 years. And we, we've been together so long, we don't even argue no more. When she get mad at me, she do real, real subtle stuff. She pick out my clothes. <laughs> Last week, she picked out one of them real tight muscle shirts for me to wear. I ain't got no muscles, y'all. I was on stage looking like a real strong Ethiopian. <laughs> Y'all may not know this, but your black family, we like to put lotion on before we leave the house. She gonna give me this lotion, it smelled good, it smelled great. It had glitter in it. <laughs> I'm on stage looking like a little black disco ball. <laughs> Gay dudes trying to holler at me after the show. You was up there shining. <laughs> you definitely gonna be a superstar of. <laughs> twinkle, twinkle, superstar. <laughs> 20 years, y'all. I know a little bit about relationships. <clears throat> Any single ladies in here? Any single ladies? Yeah. You hear that, fellas? You hear that? Huh? Don't be fooled by that, man. Do your research before you fall in love. Go meet their mamas. I'm serious. If their mama look like a grizzly bear. I don't care how cute Ursuline is to you. She is a grizzly cub. Everything is cute when it's little. You complain about she too big. No, she not. She the perfect size for a grizzly bear her age. <laughs> My friend was dating a big girl. Knew she had a weight problem because she was following McDonald's on Twitter. <laughs> her phone kept going off. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> See, I'm learning in relationships. Fellas, we don't, we don't give like they give. Like we, just, we just let stuff go. You gotta communicate. That's where the breakdown is. I'm gonna give you some examples, man. If, if your woman is mad, you have two choices. Let her be mad or let her be mad. <laughs> I just saved some of y'all right now. I just saved you. So <laughs> My wife don't even do social media. She don't even do it. Although she do participate in Throwback Thursdays. That's when she bring up something I did in the past. <laughs> and I get to the next week to defend myself. <laughs> now, having a wife is a blessing, y'all. It really is. If, if you lucky and you blessed to have a beautiful lady by your side, take a second right now. Take a look at her. Look at her. You're blessed. You are blessed. Did you know she gonna live longer than you? Did you know that? <laughs> they live longer than us, man. Don't nobody know why. I don't know why, but I know what I'ma do. I'ma do whatever she does. If she use oil of Olay, I'm using oil of Olay. <laughs> she eat Special K, I'm eating Special K. I'm not gonna die and she live a good life after me. Not on my watch. <laughs> Me and my wife got into a little disagreement 
found out she went to the grocery store and she brought some vitamins. Oh, we taking vitamins now. <laughs> so I took some of the vitamins and I let her know, hey, you know what? Kind of disappointed. I found your stash. She was like, what is you talking about? I said, the vitamins, I found them. I'm hurt. I don't even know who you are no more. <laughs> she said, Ron, those ain't vitamins. Those are birth control. <laughs> Fellas, you ever do something so stupid <laughs> that you, you don't have an answer? <laughs> But as a man, you have to reply. All I can say is, well, I don't want no more kids either. We're going to take these together because we a family. And that's what we going to do. Thank you all so much. I'm Ron Horton. No matter what, keep smiling.